Safari commences in Maun, a sizable town situated at the southeastern edge of the famous Okavango Delta. Via an extremely corrugated dirt road, the journey takes me to the northern shore of the Kwai River, a long and straight road or fire break finally takes me to the camping area. These days it is quite common to use video cameras attached to drones for the production of nature and wildlife films. I don't own a drone. With a video camera mounted on the wing, it shall do. Departure airport was Kasane International, situated in the most northeastern corner of Botswana. With the assistance of GPS navigation, I find the corrugated dirt road and cross it in direction of the camping area. The Kwai River comes into view and I turn in direction of the long and straight firebreak. It separates the Chobi National Park which lies presently below me from the Kwai community area with its campsites. Below me is the game viewing area which I will explore in the next few days. Some campsites are already occupied. Off and on one can spot a larger building with the ablution facilities. One can see the many roads running along the river. The river flows like a life-spending artery through the otherwise dry Kalahari desert. The drone flight ends at Maun International Airport, the gateway for tourists visiting the Okavango Delta. A large number of big planes are parked there, used as taxi to transport visitors, sometimes 12 at a time, to the various lodges situated in the Delta. This makes Maun one of the busiest airports in Africa. My little drone looks like a toy in between the big aircraft. Back in the game viewing area, my Toyota 4x4 takes me at a modest pace over the mostly sandy roads, mainly along the Kwai River. It is apparent that Covid doesn't play a role anymore. The camping area is about over full. It is now August and this is the best time to visit this kind of area due to it not being too cold in the morning and daytime temperatures slightly above 30 degrees Celsius and very comfortable. During September, 
temperatures climbed to about 37 to 38 degrees Celsius. In October, even higher. Let's see what to expect. I have booked the campsite for nine days. Today is the first day to again have a look how things are looking. So far, I have spotted no game. Hyenas were calling all night long. Near the water's edge lies the carcass of an elephant, or what is left over. But game is really only moving during the afternoon towards the water. This is the elephant which higher up the road chased a vehicle out of the way. One has to be careful to watch out for what this one has got in mind. A broken off tusk seems to indicate that he is quite a fighter. On the right hand side, the carcass of an elephant, partially lying in the water, but apparently still of interest for some crocodiles who are cruising up and down around the carcass. It is also smelling quite awfully, but the carcass is reduced to only skin and bones. marabou stork in the tree not far from the carcass. These storks are like vultures, living off carrion. With a sharp beak, they manage to cut open the skin of dead animals. The chalk color leg does not show the real color. Marabou storks defecate onto their legs in order to cool them down. Like with vultures, the neck of these storks are bare of feathers. By sticking their necks deep into a carcass and then retrieving, feathers might be a hindrance.
there seems still to be some action at the carcass. Crocodiles still tearing pieces of fat off the carcass, which is located under the skin of the elephant. Crocodiles cannot bite through something, but rather tear pieces of meat of fat off and then swallowing it. This African jacana doesn't care about crocodiles tearing into the carcass close to it. It doesn't seem to enter the bird's mind that it might become itself part of the meal. A juvenile yellow-billed stork. It doesn't have yet the colorful beak and the plumage of the adult stork. Blacksmith Lapwing, so called after the high pitch call he produces, which sounds like a hammer being hit onto an anvil. The characteristic shape of the head and neck of a hammer cop reminds one of a real hammer. And he has caught a frog. A bit of cleaning. And whoop, it's gone down the hatchet. Waterbuck. It is the southern variant of this species with a white ring at the back. Further north in Zambia, one finds the Defasa waterbuck with a white solid triangle on the back. This is a young bull together with some cows. The waterbuck cow does not carry horns. group of buffaloes in the reeds at the edge of the Kwai River.
first day is normally set aside for the testing of the equipment, mounting of the cameras, and also to ride around a bit to establish which spots are worth spending time at. <laughs> 